Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Yeah. Pastor's trying to recover. Yeah. Jet lag and all that kind of good stuff. He's here in body, but I don't know what his spirit may be off. You know, in La La Land. And so and Peter too and, and Snyders and and we are privileged to have Pastor Bowling with us here this morning. And most of us are familiar with him. He's been here from time to time. Midweek Latin services. Uh, he's always been a part of, so it's not a stranger and, and a welcome guest here for us this morning. Uh, we're going to follow the order of worship as printed in our bulletins, and the opening hymn is number 807, and we'll stand for the last verse. Let's open with a prayer this morning. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, this is the day that you have made and given us, and so we are here in your holy house to rejoice in that to once again rejoice in your grace and love for us through your Son, Jesus Christ. And, Lord, we're here to receive your, that holy sacrament of your body and blood for the forgiveness and strengthening of our spirits and lives. So, God, bless us and bless our time together as the fellowship of believers. And may what we do here be to the glory of your name. And may we take that glory with us as we walk out the front doors this morning. So, God... Be with us and bless us through your spirit. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, who graciously calls us his sons and daughters. Amen. In the name of the Son, whose death and resurrection has given us eternal life. Amen. In the name of the Holy Spirit, 
who has given us the gift of faith to trust all the promises of God. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Lord, that we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We spend a moment in silent reflection both upon God's word and for our own self-examination this morning. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sorry. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. wisdom to recognize the treasures you have stored up for us in heaven, that we may never despair but always rejoice and be thankful for the riches of your grace. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Ecclesiastes chapters 1 and 2. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I, the preacher, have been king over Israel in Jerusalem, and I applied my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. I have seen everything that is done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and a striving after wind. 
I hated all my toil in which I toil under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to the man who will come after me. And who knows whether he will be wise or a fool, yet he will be master of all which I toiled and use my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned about and gave my heart up to despair over all the toil of my labors under the sun. Because sometimes a person who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave everything to be enjoyed by someone who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What has a man from all the toil and striving of heart with which he toils beneath the sun? For all his days are full of sorrow, and his work is a vexation. Even in the night his heart does not rest. This also is vanity. There is nothing better for a person than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. This also, I saw, is from the hand of God. For apart from him, who can eat or who can have enjoyment? For to the one who pleases him, God has given wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner, he has given the business of gathering and collecting, only to give to one who pleases God. This also is vanity and a striving after whim. This is the word of the Lord. God. Our epistle reading this morning from Colossians chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them. But now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. We stand for the Alleluia verse. <laughs> According to St. Luke, the twelfth chapter, glory to you, O Lord. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, the, the land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, what shall I do? For I, I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, 
Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Our hymn of the day is 730, What is the World to Me? God's grace, his tender mercy, and his peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text comes to us from our gospel reading this morning. Uh, the response of Jesus to a fellow who has uh, questions about a perceived injustice. Uh, he's not getting his inheritance. And our text today deals with uh, our relationship to the material things that we own, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. It's, it's a real joy for me to be here again. Uh, it's been about 18 months, I think, since uh, I have retired. And so coming back out, stepping back out again, 
And what a joy to be here with familiar faces and, and a place that, that I, I really love. We have moved from uh, Burlington. Was, I was at Our Savior prior to retirement and uh, successfully uh, sold our home. And we are in the, the Fitchburg, uh, Madison area now. And we were blessed by the Lord to be able to, to purchase a home, which is difficult to do. Um, in this climate, so to speak. And as we've uh, moved to our new home, it, it needed some painting and we're going to do some, some uh, work uh, on the flooring and building out the, uh, the basement. You kind of do those things when you're, when you're doing a changeover. And, and we were blessed that the fellow who built our home about 30 years ago in Burlington, a home builder, uh, is still working in his 70s. And, and we said, Fred, would you help us as we you know, finish our, put in some, some floors at, at our new home in Burlington, in, in uh, Fitchburg, and, and help us with the basement? Sure, I'll do that, Pastor. And so I was working on the text for this weekend, and uh, uh, you know, when you're 74 and you're bending down and you're putting in LVP and back up and, and down and, and things are, you know, uh, you take plenty of ibuprofen uh, <laughs> afterwards and, and Fred says, you know, the first thing I do after I drive home is, is, is I take a hot shower, you know, <laughs> just to kind of loosen up. Uh, I was studying these texts and, and I said, you know, Fred, I'm looking at what I should be preaching on. And, and you know, this first, first reading, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I hated the toil of what I was doing. And here's Fred back and forth. And, should I be preaching on this, Fred? And, and we laughed about that uh, a bit. But, but I, really, I really love, uh, in our Old Testament reading, at verse 24, if I can find it here, where it says, there's nothing better for a person than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. And, and here's a fellow that's, that's 74, not yet quite retired. Uh, he could be, but, but the, the good thing is that God has given to us work and toil, and, and, if, and, you, and you can find enjoyment in that. Uh, because you are not only using the gifts that God has given to you to, to serve him, but you can also serve your, your fellow man that way. And, and here is Fred uh, putting together a beautiful floor, and he's going to put together a nice basement for us. And, and he's using his gifts to serve the Lord. And, and I, I said, Fred, you know, uh, he said, Fred was familiar with this Old Testament lesson. He said, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll be working on this, but it'll just pass on to somebody else. And if you think about it, uh, my time on earth is not that much longer, relatively speaking, and all of this stuff that we've worked on is going to be passed on to someone else. So, so the theme for, for our lessons today is, is what is your relationship to your material goods? Uh, and, and the danger is that we invest our time and our energy and our life in the material wealth of this age, which is, as we know, but we have to be reminded of again and again, only temporary. So you, you and I can be materially rich, but spiritually empty and bankrupt. And now I, I, I think that when you talk to those people who have come back, your pastor and those who have come back from the mission trip will say, you don't have to have wealth in order to be happy, in order to be connected and fulfilled in your, to God in your relationship with one another. So in our, in our epistle lesson for today, it encourages us to lift up our hearts, to look 
to, to, to put ourselves to, since you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. We constantly need to be reminded that we are inheritors of a kingdom that does not fade or spoil or perish. It's always there for us. We are in that kingdom now. The full revelation will soon to come. So lift your hearts up. I love it that in our worship service, in the preface to the Lord's Supper, when we... When heavenly things are delivered by God into our lives, the pastor says, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Take our eyes off of the material things that we see that are only temporary. And lift your hearts and your eyes and your life to know that you are in the bosom of the Lord. You're in the bosom of the Lord. And that's where true fulfillment and joy and peace is found. It'll be found nowhere else. And so you know what it's like when you, you know, some of you have some age on you, I can tell. <laughs> Others are younger. But you know how it is in life. You, you go through grade school and you learn. I have, I have grandkids. It's just so fun to watch them try to figure out what life is all about. And then you get to high school and then everybody's asking you, what are you going to do after high school? And, and the horizons are out there and they're bright. And all of a sudden, you just get released by, by the, the gifts that God has given to you into a life where you find your place, Lord willing. And then, and then it's the amass, the amassing of the goods, right? It's the first car. Remember your first car? First house. And, and life is so easy to become a pursuit of all of those things. You name it. First house, well, we need a second house. One car, no, we need another. Motorcycle, a, uh, an RV, a, uh, a bank account, another bank account. If, if God blesses in that way, and, and, and the clothing, and the experiences, and the vacations, and, and, and it's, it's innocent looking, but, but covetousness and greed is an insatiable desire to want to have just more and more and more and more and more. <clears throat> and what happens is that, is that God just simply drifts away and gets pushed aside. And the danger of that is that, is that Satan's got us by. You know, he's hooked us. He's, Come along. He's pulling us along as we drift we drift into, into a place where we find that it just does not satisfy. And so Jesus, is, in our gospel lesson, Jesus is teaching and preaching. There's a big crowd of people, and, and here is this guy's chance. He's, he's got a burr in his heart. Uh, you know, where we're putting in this floor, this floor in our house, and, and, and you rub your, your hand along the floor, and oh, if there's a piece of LV, who's installed LVP before, you know? If, if the floor is not level, the LVP pops, and you got a, you got a burr, right? You got a, you got a, and so, and so it, it can bug you. And this guy had a burr in his heart, and, and the heart, and the problem with that he had was with his brother, and it was over an inheritance. It's amazing how many families that I've seen in, in my ministry or the Lord's ministry, that, that there's an inheritance squabble and it, and it just beats up the family. Brothers against sisters. This is common. And, and this guy has a burn in his heart to his brother. Somehow he is not being fair to me. He's not releasing the inheritance that should be mine and due. 
and, and, and here's Jesus. He can make. He can be the arbiter, arbitrator, and judge. You know, we have this little built-in fairness indicator in our heart. I think you, when I pour out chocolate milk for my grandkids, you know, <laughs> the one will say he got an inch. <laughs> he got more than I My brothers, my brothers, could. and and Jesus. Jesus sees what's going on with his laser vision into our hearts. It's so neat. And he knows just where, where to land for this guy. And he, and he, and he tells him, it, it, first of all, Jesus says, I'm not going to be triangulated into this. You know what triangulation is. That you have an issue uh, between someone, and then you bring in, well, he's not doing it, you know. When I, when I really should be working with you one-on-one -on -one and, and, and we work it out. And, and Jesus, you know, don't try... Don't triangulate me. That this is not my job. My, my job is to bring about the salvation of the world, to die on the cross for you. It's a much, much higher thing than just being uh, a religious judge or second. Leave that to the authorities. But your deeper problem here is, is your covetousness. And, and I think that's what the Lord would have us think about this morning. What's your relationship to the goods that you have? You know, you, in some sense, I'm preaching to the choir here because you know what? This is where you need to be on Sunday morning. This is where you need to be. This needs to be the center of your life because this is where you find the forgiveness of your sins. This is where the word is preached. This is where you receive Jesus in his precious body and blood. And, and so this has to be primary. Not, you could be doing a whole host of other things and the pressures that are put on our kids today. There's, in Burlington, there's a soccer field right across from church on Sunday mornings. It's, it's all there. Uh, we have to make some choices and and, and what the Lord is saying here, he says, be on your guard that all covetousness, which means just, just all the plethora of things that we can accomplish and get and, and the experiences and the wealth, that, and wanting more and more of that, does be, be on your guard that it, life doesn't consist in the abundance of all of this. It's a danger. So to drive home the point of how you can drift into this, Jesus tells this wonderful parable. It's so beautifully constructed. I just love it. I'm going to read it again, but I'm going to emphasize uh, the pronouns. And, and so Jesus tells of a rich man who had uh, a, a farm or a field and it produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, what shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, you have ample goods. Laid up for many years, relax, eat, drink, and be merry. Jesus is trying to make a point here. This guy is all about himself. Who's missing? God, who gives? Who gives you the field? You know, now, this fellow may not have, he may not have been evil in the sense that he he greedily stole the, his property from somebody. Maybe he was an outstanding, hardworking, fine fellow in, in, in the community. That's, you know, but he was just, he was blessed. And, and those material blessings that he received, he just did not see that they were from, from God. So the house that you have the skills that you possess to be able to go to work, to earn a living, those are all, all from, 
from God. And, and, we, and we confess that, and we say that, and we recognize it, all the goods. And it's not a sin to be wealthy. Abraham was wealthy, and all sorts of people in the Bible were wealthy, but, but it's all in, in, in proper perspective that it comes from the hand of God. And that's where this fellow in the parable failed. He was so short, short-sighted. And, and, the, and, and at the end of the parable, God says to this fellow, fool, this night your soul is required of you. And the things that you prepared, who will they be? That echoes back to the Ecclesiastes passage. You just pass it on from one. You know, all this stuff just gets passed on from the one to the other. And he's, he's telling this fellow who had had this question and this issue with his brother, you know what, this inheritance is just going to get passed on. It's going to get passed on for you too. At some point, at some point you're going to pass away, and if your life is all involved in this, it's, it's just going to be for nothing. So where do we go from with this? I, I, think, I think one of the wonderful things that God has given to us in, in his instruction in the scriptures is, is to give. I... In, in or, you know, you and I are, are full of the Holy Spirit, but also we have the sinful flesh that hangs on us as well. And sinful flesh always wants to encourage us to get involved in the things rather than to lift our hearts to the Lord. And, and when I am encouraged in scriptures to give and to give regularly, it's a great reminder of the fact that God has provided all of the material wealth that I have received and that I find that from him. And so I would encourage you, and I'm sure that your pastor has talked to you about first fruit giving. Have you heard about that, first fruit giving? Has he, has he talked to you about that? First fruit giving is, in the Old Testament they did this when, when the harvest came in, the very first part of the harvest was brought to the temple in worship and thanks and praise to God because he was the one who provided the harvest. And, and so it's kind of like we're, we're getting cherry tomatoes right now at, at home. Are any of you got those? Who gets them first? Me or my wife? Well, well who gets whatever your income stream is? Don't pay the bills first. Don't give God the leftovers. The first check you write, you set it aside on your dresser or whatever, you do it electronically, it goes to the Lord. Why? Why? Because it's a reflection. It's saying, God, I recognize and I understand that you saw me and the rest of the world in the deepest need headed toward hell, and you did not spare anything, but you, you gave your, your best, your only son for me, and he died for my sins, and he rose again, and he made me connected to you, and he made me a part of the kingdom. And when I die and am buried, I will hear the voice Come forward, and I will come out of the grave, and it's all because you gave your best, and so I want to reflect that in my life. <coughs> I want to first fruit give, as you've given to me. And so that helps me when I, that helps me uh, with the, with, when I first fruit give, and, and when I tithe, it helps me to, to watch that the covetousness of this world doesn't get at me. And then, I, and then I would say, you know people in your life that are probably just headlong into the pursuit of these things. And they're good people. And they're hard workers. But it's not life. It's just not life. Can you gently, lovingly show them where life is moored, where life has an anchor? And that is in 
in your relationship and my relationship with the God who has loved us and called us into the kingdom by our baptism and calls us each with the rhythm of each week to lift our hearts up and to receive his son and his precious body and blood. And so enjoy the blessings that God has given. Enjoy the toil. I'm going to see Fred is going to come back on, on Tuesday morning and he's going to be bending over and installing more, more wood floors and he's, he's going to be doing honest and good labor and he's going to enjoy it even though there are aches and pains. But keep it all, keep it all in, in, in perspective. And lift your hearts and rejoice in him now because he's here with us. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to join with me in confessing the faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For your word and spirit that our hearts would be guarded against pride and arrogance, and that we may be wise to love rightly all that you've made, being used for your purpose and glory, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For your church, that you would give her honorable and noble men for the office of the holy ministry, and gracious and devoted men and women commissioned for the teaching arts and works of charity within your church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for all husbands and wives that they would live in fidelity to their vows and promises, for parents as they teach their children to know and love the Lord, for single adults that they find fulfillment in their service to others, and for our lives together that we might show the love of Christ to one another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for our nation and its leaders that you provide our citizens and those who live in the U.S. with competent and wise leaders who will do your will so that peace and justice would be established and that the gospel would have free course. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the people of Ukraine, that war would come to an end. We pray for a restoration of calm and security and heal the wounds that have been inflicted. Restore peace so that what has been laid waste can again be planted and built up. Open your fatherly heart and bountiful hand to help all those in need, especially for the suffering, for the dying and the grieving, in your servants in this parish who may be in need of healing of body and, and, and others. We pray also for my fellow pastor David Nuss, that his cancer treatments would be successful and that he may return to health and active ministry. For all those who are sick, we pray that they would be sustained in the truth that their lives are now hidden with Christ and God and that when he appears, they will also appear with him in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. We rejoice that Pastor Oswald and those leading and participating in the mission trip to Mexico have come home safely, and we pray that their renewal of joy in serving others in Christ's name would be a blessing, and that they, uh, their work would be 
established as a blessing and a witness to your love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we would one day be delivered by the hand of Christ into paradise, which he has won for us. And in thanksgiving, we, we rejoice for the peace and rest that you have given those who he has let out of the great tribulation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Answer all doubt and fear, O Lord, with confidence in your word and sacraments that by means of these by these means of grace, we may be kept in holiness and guarded from temptation and despair until the day when you bring all things to their perfect fulfillment and we are delivered to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The offering is received. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
resist the true body. They can drink from our Lord, Lord and Savior Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Even after death, by the forgiveness, they can drink the precious blood of our Lord. They shall drink from body of our Lord Jesus. True blood of our Lord. Take and drink. May both his precious body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and the life of the last We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this sacrament, and we implore you to strengthen us through it so that our life and conduct will reflect the presence of Christ to whom we have been united in our baptism. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for the final hymn. I'd rather have Jesus. Peace.
welcome to worship once again. Pastor, I was, I was blessed by that sermon this morning. It really spoke to my heart. Kind of, <laughs> you know, a little of that too, you know, and shape up and shit up. Anyway, what a blessing. Uh, and we were, we were pleased to have you here this morning, of course. Uh, Bible study, you're going to lead us in a Bible study downstairs because uh, he needs the TV. So uh, join us down there for a Bible study after some cookies and coffee, about 20 minutes, something like that. We'll meet downstairs. So bring your stuff down as you come down. Uh, <coughs> glad you're back. Glad you're back. Where'd they go? Oh, way over there. Glad you're back, safe and sound. We were back there in the corner. I couldn't see it. And, and I, I'm sure you have a lot of stories to, to share and to tell us about in the, in, in the coming weeks. And, and maybe you want to even work it out. I don't know. That's just another meeting. I would say, invite everybody to come in. You guys just talk to us. But maybe that'll, maybe that'll be only a, in a Bible study or sometime you know, that you guys could do that and, and share that ministry that you were a part of down there. And, and, uh, so anyway, uh, men's Bible study on Wednesday. What else am I missing? Oh, yeah, car show meeting. That's right. Anything else? Anyway. And generally, we have coffee and treats downstairs. We had to do that this morning, so do grab your coffee and treats upstairs before you head out to the Bible. Yes, I'm sure you didn't have that so much to think about, you know, when you get in at 1 o'clock in the morning, you know, and you just... Yes, God, yes. Oh. I'm sorry. There's also sign up sheets for the women's uh, luncheon in August on deck table. Okay. Okay. Good. As, the, as stewardship chairman here at, at Hope Lutheran, I want to thank you for your message. You kind of stole my thunder a little bit, but you know, as stewardship chairman, that tied in so well with stewardship. And one other item as far as stewardship too. A couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that our our uh, food pantry collection was down to the bare bones down there. Uh, thank you to those that either brought some items here, it's overflowing, or I know some of you took it directly to the uh, uh, location there in Twin Lakes. So I want to thank you very kindly. Okay. Anything else? God's grace and blessings. We'll see you next week. Now it won't go out. <laughs> I'll get that right. So. <laughs> 